in the University of Melbourne. And here you can see a significant article by Robert Gallo and Luc Montagnier. He talks about therapy or a vaccine by which he means drug therapy. It's not talking about holistic improvement in people's health. Max Essex. And that's a African green monkey, I believe. And uh, the epidemiology of AIDS in the United States. And then the international epidemiology is written by Peter Peel and Jonathan Mann. As you'll remember, Peter Peel replaced Jonathan Mann as the head of UN AIDS after Jonathan Mann's premature death. And Peter Peel has recently made predictions reported in the AIDS newspaper in Melbourne, the Fairfax Press, that the AIDS epidemic is about to explode in China and Russia. They made previous predictions about India and Thailand, in particular Southeast Asia. And uh, you'll see, you would have seen in the previous uh, two hours that the McFarlane Burnett Center continue to behave in their uh, treatment strategies uh, as if the main problem in these countries is injecting drug use and prostitution when in fact injecting drug use is not part of the culture of the third world generally uh, except where it has been introduced by the Americans and uh, particularly Vietnam and uh, uh, Korea but uh, the creation of a narcotic an opiate dependent population in the third world and the first world was created by the British Empire in what are now known as the Opium Wars um, of the 1840s. And at that stage, Britain and America had established themselves as the centers of the opium trade and also the alcohol trade. Oh, not the advertisers. You'll note the various companies that were advertising in this 1988 Scientific American publication and a range of international companies, but many with connections with or history, uh, historical connections with the eugenics movement and the German Nazis. And the biological warfare institute. Luc Montagnier said COVID was man made. Now, Luc Montagnier and uh, Robert Gallo write about retroviruses, but they. failed to mention the real history of the discovery of retroviruses and there is no mention at all of the interest of the military establishment in America in all viruses including and especially viruses that cause cancer and uh, here you see the only drug company ad in this, in this issue and this is Bayer, which have a history of complicity, again, in the eugenics movement. Bayer. Um, the authors of all the articles in this, with the exception of Peter Peel, 
are American researchers, uh, several from Harvard. Lufthansa. And the origins of the AIDS epidemic by Max Essex, who was a co-colleague of Robert Gallo. And they give the impression that it's well established that HIV came from green monkeys and they even have a photograph of a green monkey but they do not mention from the Harvard School of Public Health the history of Harvard University in uh, promoting the eugenics movement throughout the world and uh, the role of Harvard University in supporting biological warfare research from the time that biological warfare research was first done in America because of course Harvard was founded in the 1600s and uh, was the oldest or is the oldest uh, of the American universities. Here you can see that HIV back in 1988 had been injected into a whole range of primates to see which of them would get HDLV, HIV-1 and HIV-2. So obviously the argument that finding HIV in the liver of a chimpanzee in their uh, American Air Force bases uh, or stored specimens in Africa or anywhere else um, cannot reasonably used to refute the idea that HIV is the result of biological warfare and the implication of a genocidal program. Here is a map of the incidence of HIV two in prostitutes they call sex workers in various parts of Africa and you can see a huge number of prostitutes in Senegal which was a French colony and uh, there's a perspective presented of the epidemiology in the US that is best understood by the photograph that they make a point is not provided by CDC or the Centers for Disease Control and they say that the blacks and Hispanics are particular targets and uh, the authors are from the Centers of Disease Control in, At in Atlanta. Um, and the photograph is accompanied by some maps of the demographics of the AIDS epidemic in the 1980s in America, with the purple and red areas showing the areas of highest incidence. So you can see that there were epicenters in New York in particular. Delaware and Maryland are centers of the chemical and biological and conventional weapons uh, production facilities in the United States. Here you can see a comparison between homosexual, heterosexual, IV drug users um, and various groups including um, receipts, receivers of transfusions. Um, 
in the American demographics. This is apparently a child with AIDS, a five-year-old AIDS patient. Uh, it doesn't look anything like a five-year-old child, and he's still wearing nappies. He or she, I'm not sure. And these are the demographics of the AIDS epidemic in the United States at the time. This information. You can see the steady increase in numbers. And here we have a comparison between white, black and Hispanic populations and their proportional incidence of HIV. You can see that blacks and Hispanics are disproportionately represented. Since that time, the biggest growing population of AIDS uh, sufferers in America are no longer white homosexuals, uh, but young black women of childbearing age. And here we have and uh, the article that is authored by Peter Peel uh, amongst uh, other authors including Jonathan Mann and the World Health Organization's Global AIDS Program uh, which was renamed the UN AIDS uh, UNAIDS has a budget of billions of dollars uh, supposedly to treat AIDS um, but the evidence that I've provided in these 15 episodes of the cause of the AIDS epidemic suggests that these billions of dollars are being used to kill people while making a great deal of money and also setting up an infrastructure for surveillance and uh, slavery of black people in Africa and throughout the world. You note that the parade here of people um, who are supposedly f in, from Uganda are carrying a purple cross and of course, Christianity was introduced to Africa by the European colonizers. That's not actually true. Christianity came to Ethiopia. The religion of Prester John was the minor. My Here you can see that the demographics of AIDS in Africa, the epidemic followed, according to Scientific American, the epidemic in North America. And at that time, they divided into pattern one, pattern two, pattern three on not reporting and HIV two. Pattern one 
was homosexuals and drug users or spread by homosexuals and drug users. Pattern two was a heterosexual disease. HIV-2 was largely confined to Portuguese and French colonies in Africa, in the West Coast and the East Coast. And uh, Australia had the pattern one along with all of North America and South America. However, the demographics have changed significantly since 1988 in the last 17 years. Here you notice a significant variation between the concentration of AIDS in various parts of the Caribbean and the area that was British Guiana which is located in purple which was a British colony and the only British colony in South America had a high concentration of AIDS unlike its neighbors. Some of this is attributed by the authorities to a lack of reporting or increased reporting. And of course, it is quite true that the more you test people for HIV, the more people will come and test as positive. The problem is that all tests have got false positive incidences. And if you widely screen a large population, a large population will test positive. If automatically these people are then started onto a cytotoxic drug or a series of drugs that are cytotoxic, um, then of course one will create collapse of the immune system and AIDS. The real management of the public health um, that is needed is fresh food, fresh water, um, ability to earn a living, clothes, a nice place to live, and the ability to see plants and animals when one looks out of one's window. And birds. <laughs> and music and a lot of things. Right. There's a lot of birds. I should point out they were the marketed as Zydovidi. The previous one was AZT, Azithromycin, which was developed by the British Welcome Pharmaceuticals in the 1950s and used for cancer treatment. And it wasn't used much because it caused collapse of the immune system. That was put forward as the benchmark treatment for AIDS. It's the Jewish British Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli who made the saying lies, damn lies, and statistics. Well, no. These are all possible for all the countries of the third world, but they have never been the agenda for the third world of the bankers in the first world and the kings and queens of the European royal family that divided the world amongst themselves in the period from 1500 
to 1945 Uh, is a German was a German concept that was written about by Nietzsche and uh, was taken up by the Nazis as well and uh, being better than everyone else uh, is something that uh, was deeply ingrained into Masonic thinking and is reflected in the culture of the American and British and Australian political systems. And the educational system, when I was a child, I learned in the Trinity College, Candy, in Sri Lanka. Good, better, best, never let it rest, till the good is better, and the better, best. <laughs> It's all about competition. These people cheat. This atlas is a 1970s Jacaranda school atlas, uh, authored by some retired teachers and principals of uh, Brisbane High School, Corinda High School, uh, and also in New South Wales. Here you can see that the countries that were previously named Gold Coast have become Ghana, Slave Coast has become Benin, uh, and the Congo uh, and Kinshasa uh, were then or uh, the Congo was called Zaire and Rhodesia has been divided into Zimbabwe and Zambia during this time, the white South African regime or the apartheid regime, which is often blamed by the British on the Dutch or Afrikaners, was in fact very much a British idea and supported by uh, the, all the white Europeans. But uh, it was the British who instituted concentration camps to kill the Dutch during the Boer War in South Africa and maintain control of the infrastructure of um, Cape Town and the Southern Cape of Africa from the time of Cecil Rhodes right up until the present day. The center of this wealth that the British have maintained in South Africa is centered on minerals and particularly